of the Millican Board of Trustees of January 23rd, 2019 to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge Town clerk, please call the roll. Yes, Mayor. Trustee Trailer? Here. Trustee Ehrlich? Here. Trustee Wakeman? Here. Trustee Burak? Here. Trustee Smith? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Austin? Here. Mayor Woodcock? Here. Thank you. Agenda approval. Does anyone have any additions or deletions to the agenda? I move we approve the agenda as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Citizens' comments. Do I have any citizens' comments? Seeing that there is none, we'll move on. Minutes of the previous meeting. Motion approved, Ms. Bennett. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passed. Acknowledgement of paid list of bills for January 2019. No questions. <laughs> I had a question. Is that me? Um, the lot holding refund? Was, I was just curious what that was. What's the amount? 20 grand. The finance director's coming up to address it. The lot holding one is for the Prairie Sky subdivision that they pulled out of, so we gave the refund back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have questions? any other questions while she's up there? I'm just curious about that. I don't know they Consent agenda. We only have one thing. Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Town clerk, call the roll call vote. <clears throat> Trustee Burak? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Austin? Yes. Mayor Woodcock? Yes. Motion passed. Going on to the action agenda. Action agenda item A is a public hearing to consider the revocation of floodplain development permit number Fox Rock Hotel Delta Papa 009er issued to Two Rivers Rock Mine at Nature's Park. The time is 6.35, I'm going to open the public hearing. And I believe Community Development Director Pepper McClanahan is going to be the one giving us presentation. Thank you, Mayor Woodcock and members of the Board of Trustees. Also with us tonight is Troy Spraker uh, from Lampernearson. He is our contract floodplain development manager, so if you have any questions, he's here as well. Addressing the uh, staff report, as mentioned, this is a public hearing to consider the revocation of the floodplain development permit. Now, we do have representatives uh, from the property owner here in the, uh, in the audience as well. Uh, the location of this property is approximately 250 acres. It's east of Highway 257. <clears throat> it's also east of uh, the Union Pacific Railroad track. It's south of County Road 52 and it's near and along the Big River, uh, Big Thompson River. And a portion of it is also east of the confluence of the Little and Big Thompson Rivers. Um, the background is that Two Rivers Rock Mine at Nature's Park 
filed an application for a flood development permit with the town of Millican on April 30th of 2018 to reclaim an area of aggregate mining on the above described property. The permit application was reviewed by our floodplain administrator and was issued uh, after the town received payment on November 19, 2008. Activities on the property had commenced prior to the permit being officially issued by the town. The basis of the permit was a 2002 reclamation plan submitted to the state of Colorado as part of the property owner's um, division of reclamation and mining safety mine permit. Information in the reclamation plan did not match the conditions on the ground as of April 2018, such as the area of disturbance and depth of the mining pit, because the property owner did not find sufficient aggregate during early mining operations and abandoned the mining attempt. The property owner subsequently overfilled both the initial area of mining activity as well as brought in a large amount of fill dirt, which was not approved in the Millican floodplain development permit number 009. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency notified the town on, July, on January 3, 2019 that the activities conducted on the property are not in compliance with the National Flood Insurance Rate Program. FEMA has given the town of Millican 30 days to submit a corrective action plan. Uh, to date, two notices of violation from the town were mailed certified return receipt, uh, one on December 17, 2008. 18 and one on January 10th of 2019, as well as two cease and desist orders that were mailed at the same time as the uh, notices of violation. On the advice of town's legal counsel, staff is recommending that the board find the application is uh, in violation of plain, that the applicant is in violation of floodplain development permit number 009 and request that the permit be revoked pursuant to section 16 650 subparagraph 3. The findings of fact of 16650 subparagraph 3 are that there was a departure from the approved plan specifications or conditions of approval because the owner deposited more fill dirt in the floodplain than was approved. Number two, there is a violation of article 8, the floodplain areas section of the Milken Town Code because the activities the owner do not comply with the floodplain standards or the terms of the permit that was issued. Uh, as well, the development permit was obtained under false representation because the 2002 reclamation plan submitted as a basis of the permit didn't uh, address the existing conditions of the plan of the, on the ground, nor what activities were needed to uh, comply with the floodplain development permit. And so therefore, the floodplain development permit was issued in error. There are a number of exhibits that are attached to your packet and uh, I call your attention specifically to the aerial photograph taken. It's behind the second page of the application, permit application, where you can see the mounds and the extent of the fill dirt that was added in the floodplain. Um, as a note, we are cooperating with other federal agencies um, with their permit requirements, which are separate legal or regulatory actions beyond what the town is doing to comply with our code and with the order that was issued uh, to us by FEMA. So with that, I submit the staff report and exhibits for the record and I'm happy to answer any questions that Did, you have. Is the, uh, the letter I got not? Pardon me? The letter, the notification I got that was sent to me. From FEMA? From that's, FEMA. That's the one I'm referencing. Did you, uh, I don't know if you want to read it, you might read better than I do, but Part of the last couple paragraphs of that letter kind of hits home in the aspect of probation. FEMA sends notifications of non-compliance status to all current NFIP policyholders <coughs> in the jurisdiction. Additionally, all NFIP policyholders will be charged an additional $50 probation surcharge. That's not us, that's all the residents in town in that area. <coughs> um, ramifications of the suspension from the NFIP are severe. When a jurisdiction is suspended from the NFIP, residents are unable to purchase new NFIP insurance policies. Existing NFIP policies cannot be renewed for no federal grants or loans developments may be made in identified flood hazard areas under programs administrated by federal agencies. 
No federal mortgage insurance or loan guarantees may be provided to in identified flood hazard areas. This includes loans written by Federal Housing Administration, Veteran Affairs, and others. The town of Millican and their residents could lose approximately $1.7 million of NFIP insurance coverage. Additionally, no federal disaster assistance may be provided in repair insurable buildings located in identified flood areas for damages caused by a flood. Staff would recommend we make that exhibit part of the record as well. The revocation of this permit and the next steps with the applicant are part of our plan to comply with uh, bringing this property into compliance with our, our code and uh, to demonstrate to FEMA that we are taking every reasonable step we can to bring the property into compliance. So how much extra fill dirt is, has been moved onto the property above? What would you estimate, Troy? <coughs> A lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Acres. <laughs> Acres. What's More the impact to the surrounding areas of that extra field dirt? Is it possible their properties will flood? That's why they, this is why FEMA wrote that, basically saying that the entire floodplain has changed versus the water going out and going on to one, you know, spreading out. Well, now you just made a funnel for it to go out and then hammer the next area down. To address your question, Trustee Austin, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem Austin, there is that possibility. We have not uh, received any nor conducted any engineering studies that document that, but that is the concern. Um, and we are asking for engineering studies as part of the next permit. Who pays those engineering studies? The applicant. Um, if the as dirt has to be removed, approximately how long would it take to remove it? that's going to be part of the plan we asked for as well. In addition, we want to know exactly where that fill dirt will be taken so that we can document that it doesn't cause any issues with other sections of our code, such as the ridge top and hill side protection overlay zone that we have, um, or placed in another area that's in the floodplain. When will we start getting snow melt? Any other questions? I have a question for Troy. So as our floodplain manager, why was the permit issued? Uh, at that time, you know, the documents that were provided, it was basically filling up a hole. So it was a mining that was going to be reclaimed and revegetated, so it was filling up a hole and bringing it back to the original condition. So he was doing a reclaim, but ended up changing the entire scope of work. And the entire scope of work changed. Okay. So as a floodplain manager, isn't it your duty to be out there inspecting such issued permit and keep the town up to date on what's going on? The um, floodplain management, I mean, it's been always a very minimal uh, positions. This one, it was a minimal work that they should have been doing, um, I guess. I mean, who's, who's supposed to oversee that stuff? I'm asking you, how did it get to this point? If you're in we, charge of overseeing the floodplain operation, how did it get to this point? Uh, prob well, frankly, it's probably the budget is way too small, so there is not a lot of budget in Millican to be able to provide a lot of this oversight, so we Nobody didn't. came to us and asked us for money to, to oversee this. Uh, I think well, that lies back yeah. on your engineering firm that you guys dropped the ball on this thing. Well, I guess... So if we end up in, in issues, um, you know, what's, what's your part in the deal? <laughs> uh, I am here now that we identified what the issue is. I'm here to try to help try to get it resolved, so... Or I guess that's a, another discussion, I guess, on whose responsibility is it to do everyday oversight on all the floodplain and activities in the town. Uh, frankly, I guess I don't feel it was, it was over, the scope changed, uh, they, the scope changed. Uh, nobody was notified, so 
there was a lot of dirt work that nobody knew about. So, well, somebody should have been checking up on it. We issued a permit. Uh, I think we just issue permits and say go do whatever you think you want to do, without anybody being responsible for checking up on the permit we issued. I think that's going to come back to the fact that we write a policy saying that these people, you know, town staffs, you know, this is their job and this is our engineer's job and this, if we need to budget more money, we need to budget more money to have it cleared. But if he, you know, Troy's saying that there's not enough money for the budget, well, again, back to LAMP, they should have went to the people they deal with, town administrator, public works, and said, we need more money in order so we can budget and do this a better job. And the staff should have brought it to us. I mean, if we only budget twenty thousand dollars for Troy to do his job a year, and he eats that up in doing federal grant and stuff like that, in that aspect, I can see where he's—it's a catch twenty-two because he's trying not to go over budget for the town, but now he's not doing inspections either. But is that in his scope of work also? Do we designate in our contract with them? Is this Lamp Ryan Erickson's scope of work? We came into this with. County Road 46 project when we first came on. Who was supposed to be out there inspecting everything? And we ended up saying, well, Bill's gonna go out and inspect it and look it over, along with Troy. I think you were on that project, weren't you? I was, yeah. yeah. We had to sit down and designate. I mean, it's not the job, the board's job to micromanage, but I guess at some point, someone needs to step in and say, you know, this is your job, you, you babysit this, this is your job, you babysit that. And if we got to write a policy to make it happen, that's what we need to do. Well, I, I just can't see how the town <coughs> issues permits and we follow up with nothing. Right. Well, that's on, there's someone should have followed up so somewhere. That, that makes us look bad. So, oh, can I address that just for a second? Um, Mayor and Council, if I might, um, I believe everybody acted in good faith um, initially in this process. Um, the property is not easily visible from any public right of way. We were not aware that the overfilling was occurring until we started receiving complaints from adjacent property owners, which was in late November. We immediately started acting to take care of the situation and contact the property owner who had not acted in good faith or at least not in compliance with his permit. Um, there, there is a process by which at some point after it's reclaimed, the property owner notifies us that the work is complete and we go out and send our floodplain administrator out to complete a follow-up inspection to verify compliance with the permit. So this is one of those that um, we weren't aware of. When we became aware of it, we took immediate steps to rectify it. So after he got the first, or the, the applicant got the first cease and desist, did they continue to go back out and do work? Uh, they did, yes. So they completely ignored the town's request to stop? Correct. And did this happen more than once? We issued the first cease and desist. Uh, we met with them uh, later on that day. They were still working. Uh, then we ordered, uh, then we issued the second cease and desist order. Uh, I think at that time, that's when the operations has ceased. Mayor, if I could, um, the permit was issued for a different type of project than what actually was transpiring we, there. We, we, yeah. um, uh, to have a engineer check on a project that isn't even known to be happening is a different issue too. Um, this was a, a whole different scope. After the meeting that we had where discussion of the cease and desist order was readdressed, I went out and I observed additional uh, filling of um, a wetland area or a pond. I don't know that it was technically addressed as a wetland, but later I believe that's the designation that it was given and I was the one that observed and reported the additional work. And after that point in time, upon additional review, I did not see any additional work happening. 
maybe just to go back to the flood hazard development permit, <coughs> some of the checks and balances, and I think uh, the mayor uh, mentioned this, is after the work was completed, one of the requirements is they would have to go back and resurvey it. We would double check, make sure what they surveyed or what they constructed wasn't compliant to the plan that they provided. So that would have been kind of the final check to make sure that they were in, in compliance. Basically, they, they pulled the wool over our eyes. They came and applied for one thing, one did something completely different with little regard to what the town wanted or the permit was. Correct. That's the best blunt way yeah. of putting it. And when we sent a cease and desist, they didn't care. They kept working. Correct. Okay. At what stages will we be notified as we try to remedy this situation? How often can we expect to hear? I, I'm very concerned well, that this will get away from us in any way, shape, or form. Although I have full confidence in Pepper McClanahan, I'd like to get an idea of, you know, when we will receive reports on this. Uh, I would think at every board here, and we can give a quick update. But. Yeah, so Troy and I are working very closely together with this, um, as we are with the applicant. And as I mentioned, they have representatives here in the audience tonight, if you have questions for them later on. We have outlined a plan of attack, so to speak, of how we expect the property owner to respond. They have taken initial steps. There are several things that they'll need to provide us now that were different than what they needed to provide us with the initial permit such as erosion control and stormwater permits from the county. Uh, they have hired an engineering firm. We have received confirmation that the engineering firm has submitted that permit to the county, so they're waiting for approval of that. They can't reapply for their floodplain development permit until they have certain things in place. So we are seeing some uh, positive forward motion from the property owner to take care of business. In the meantime, um, there have been other inspections from other agencies and uh, there is currently our cease and desist order on the property as well as a, as a uh, state, well actually federal uh, cease and desist order on the property. So no dirt can be moved until we have all of the permits that they need and that includes they'll need permits from the Army Corps of Engineers, possibly some others, we've been in touch with them. and. We'll need an engineering plan and survey of what's the elevation and extent of that filter and what's it going to take to take it back to uh, pre-fill conditions. So, here, I don't know if you've answered. The legal might be launched. Is, can we put a timeline on this? Because it's affecting residents. It's not just affecting, you know, one person, the applicant. We now have residents getting affected in the fact of their insurance and everything else. Mayor? We can't put a timeline on the other entities' permits. Would be the challenge with issuing the property owner uh, a permit. We could, at most, issue him a deadline to apply for the permits, for their permits, and therefore what we need in order to issue our permit. Well, my well, my, my thing is, if we're going to do it at this point, because it's not one person that's has the possibility of losing their insurance. It's a couple people through that area, or a few people is that we pull them to the fire. They came in, they were completely wrong in what they did, so now we put timelines on and we hold them to that fire because it's affecting our residents. Can we legally do that? Say this is the timeline, this is when we want you to apply and have your applications done, this is when we want anything town related can be done. Now granted waiting on feds might take a while, they're a little slow, but. FEMA has, at their first meeting that we had with them, prior to giving the letter to you, will work with us. What they want to see is a plan. Mm -hmm. They are not going to initiate any penalties on us or our citizens as long as we are showing diligent effort and progress forward to bring this property into compliance. Well, if they had enough money to spend to move all that dirt, they can have enough money to do that in 30 days. Come, well, I up, think with, come up with a plan. There's a full-blown plan. I think my concern is we got a mobile home park down there with a lot of residents that have their insurance through FEMA. Randy's man's house is 20 feet from where they're filling dirt. Okay. So, we, <laughs> yeah, we have quite a few people with concerns. I mean, if they want to waste money doing something illegal, they can put their money where their mouth is and do something right and get it done on time. <coughs> we have issued a timeline cool. for them. Uh, uh, 
Troy developed a step-by-step, -step, and I'll let him address that. Yeah, so <clears throat> basically what we're excuse me, trying to do is uh, identify the problem, figure out uh, basically starting it all over. This, this is the scope of work that we're trying to do. So we have to get a new floodplain development permit to remove all the fill dirt. We've got to make sure that once it's done, that it'll be a, a no rise if, once the project is completed. Uh, we need to work with the Department of Reclamation to make sure that they have their concerns uh, addressed. We need to work with the EPA to make sure that their uh, concerns were addressed, and we need to make sure the state and their concerns were addressed before we can actually legally issue a, a new flood hazard development permit. So that's kind of the the things that we're working on. Um, I did talk to their engineer uh, earlier today, and it sounds like they did get the state permit for the CDPHE the erosion control permit that was issued today. So to go into Pepper's uh, comments, things are moving forward. Uh, the gentleman that I talked to, they said they are working on the uh, the EPA uh, permit to try to get that resolved. So, so I know they're working on it. We are giving them deadlines to at least give us progress reports, and they're they're very aggressive deadlines that we are giving them. And I know they're diligently working on those efforts. So, so we're we're trying to push forward. Let me mention, Mayor and Council, at your leisure. Um, let me also mention that the second cease and desist order, we weren't going to get into this, but I think it's important for you to know, is with the Army Corps of Engineers, and it involves uh, stream banks and wetlands. So as, and we, I've met with the representative, and, and Troy's been involved in emails with the Army Corps representative. It's important that we coordinate efforts with these other agencies. That's going to take some time, because we don't want them to fix one thing, but not fix the whole problem. The wetlands are one thing, but they don't encompass the entire floodplain. So it's a subset of what we're dealing with, and we need to coordinate together to make sure that both of our plans are going to address uh, all agencies' violations. So that will take some time. Um, and I know Christiana had some answers to your questions about uh, issuing deadlines. Yeah, so to directly answer your question of is it legal, I don't think there's any legal issue with issuing deadlines. Um, I think it comes more from Pepper's point, the issue with it comes more from Pepper's points of logistics and coordinating and being able to make sure all the proper permits and everything are well, one of the, obtained first. One of the things that concerns me is we're going to start having water runoff <coughs> from the mountains here, you know, four or five months. Mm -hmm. And I now, after seeing this, I understand why down where I am, my river was so dirty and nasty because I saw the river banks, they pushed dirt right to the river. So I completely get why I'm so dirty down by me. But, you know, we start getting the runoff coming in and it's just going to pull that dirt that hasn't been rooted in with anything. The higher that river goes, the more dirt's going to pull down river. So my thing is the quicker we can get that dirt out of there and help the residents bring it back down to where it was, the better off we're going to be. So that's my biggest thing is, you know, what do we got to do? Who do we got to talk to to say, we need to get the dirt out of here? Well, we all understand the urgency, as do the other federal agencies, uh, which is why within two weeks of the notice of violation, we had already notified um, at least two other federal agencies with the work furlough. Sorry to make excuses, but it's true. Um, Army Corps has uh, some crew that are still working, but um, EPA does not, and they want to elevate this to a different level or alert another agency that isn't working right now because of the government shutdown. So, um, you know, they've hired an engineer firm. That's a step. They now have their uh, swamp in place, their stormwater master plan in place and approved through the county, sounds like. Um, the revocation of this permit is another step in completing it, and the first two steps are part of them applying for the other permit, for the next well, legitimate <laughs> uh, floodplain development permit, which is going to allow us to address this issue. So I, we, we definitely understand um, the urgency, which is why, you know, 
we've done a whole lot in a very short period of time and there's been actually dam safety was out there conducting a, a, an inspection as well so this is on the radar of a lot of people and a lot of agencies are moving forward I'd also like to have an accounting of how much of our uh, staff time attorney time and engineering time is spent on this project so that we know overall what this is costing the town thank you I think the residents have a right to know and if it's too much we get it back our ordinance does allow us and the permit does allow us to bill the applicant for time to process the permit so some of these expenses will be offset when we issue the next permit because this in my mind is all preparing to issue the correct permit well i guess i'll have done everything we do yeah. mm -hmm. We will Does the applicants have any? <laughs> oh, Joe. Sorry. Could you state for the record how notice was given to the public of this public hearing? Who did that? Um, Cheryl. Yeah. Cheryl, can you answer that? Yes. Um, what I was told is that the property was noticed and in our noticing areas, the post office and the um, Town hall. Certified letter? And a certified letter was sent to the applicant, yes. Return receipt. So we're not required to publish this notice? I was, I was Under your that. code, no, it's notice to the property owner or to the permit holder. And we followed the code provisions to provide notice. question and so it doesn't we, we aren't required to notify the people it would it might affect or no don't let permit not oh, okay okay i thought okay. we were talking about okay okay <laughs> uh, i'm brett bloom i uh, am here for the applicant i uh, just would like to let you know that we have hired uh, rocky ridge civil engineering uh, Control Sanders is here tonight with me. Uh, we do have the uh, certificate for the, uh, <coughs> the stormwater permit. Uh, he's working on uh, uh, getting the uh, permit through the Corps of Engineers. Uh, we're working as quickly as the government will allow us to get permits. And we've got to have all these permits to be able to move forward on moving any dirt whatsoever. And as soon as we can get all these permits together to show the town of Melican that, that we have everything, we can't move any dirt uh, because of the cease and desist. So as soon as I get, we get all these permits, uh, we'll be moving dirt quickly and, and uh, we've got to have a construction plan and all that that, uh, that your Pepper and Troy have uh, provided us of what they want done and we're going to get it done as quickly as possible but like I say the, the government's kind of holding us up right now on how much how quickly we can get the right permits to uh, redo all this and your role is I'm sorry I'm a little unclear you represent Craig Spear I, I work or your rest Western trucking yeah, I'm, I'm not with Western Equipment and Truck. I just uh, uh, kind of a project manager for him here and there. I'm not the manager over this one here, but I'm here to uh, speak for Craig, and I know what's going on there. And uh, I guess I'm kind of in a project manager position here, but... Uh, so were you managing this project from the beginning no. or you just no. came in now? Okay. I okay. came in in the middle of all of this and uh, yeah, it, uh, I originally had the, uh, did the reclamation, had the surveys done and everything for the reclamation. I told them where we needed dirt to <coughs> the, the, you know, the permit that we had and Troy is the one that issued that permit. And, uh, and then I wasn't back out here for a couple months, and then when I come out, I was as shocked as everybody here was. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we're uh, we're working 
as fast as we can. And uh, uh, Joel, he, he's the head for me right now. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Do you know why the work was done the way it was handled? Pardon me? Do you know why the work was done without permit to haul that dirt in? I do not. I don't know. I, I wished I knew why all that dirt was pulled in there. I, I think he had a, a thought that he could raise that floodplain to bring it up out of the floodplain. And, uh, and uh, he didn't go through the right procedures to get it done. Mm -hmm. What's that bridge over there going across the river rated for? Do you know, off the top of your head? I have no idea. I know they went in there. I was told in, I think it was 2006, uh, his, Bob Condon worked for him back then and they did a lot of reinforcing. And the Army Corps of Engineers actually worked with them on that and reinforced that bridge. And they had to put nets and everything under there so welding rods didn't drop down in when they were welding on it and stuff. And uh, I have no clue what it's rated for. Okay. Well, you guys have any other questions? Cool. Any yeah. other questions from you guys? Well, thank you for thank you. coming. Thank you. And do I have any questions or comments from the public before I close the public hearing? Yeah, I'd like to ask you a couple questions. Before I Can you come mm -hmm. up to the... <clears throat> Andrew Laddick, 200 South Olive Avenue, over in Milliken, by the school. A uh, couple questions I have listening to the testimony here is I, too, as a citizen, am very interested as to the amount of town money and staff time mm -hmm. that's been paid uh, to do this. I would like to see any uh, resolution that comes from this board to have timelines and deadlines in it. Because my experience is if you don't measure and keep track of things, things get out of hand and things don't get accomplished. And number three, uh, we uh, have the applicant's representative here who's kind of sort of a project manager. A little short on some specific details, sir. And Permits and stuff were issued. There were some issue problems with our engineering company. There were some problems in acting in good faith on the applicant's behalf. If we go through this process again and we invest more town time and money, how can we get assurances that this is not going to get out of hand again and the permits and the plan are just going to be ignored as they were done previously? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments before I close the public hearing? Any other questions? Ah, what time is it? It is 7.09. I'm going to close the public hearing. You guys have any more questions or discuss amongst ourselves about anything or? No, I don't see anything discussed. Could I ask anything? I would, no. uh, I think that we, have some, uh, responsibility here to, um, stay on this and I would like to see us have a report at every meeting of, um, the progress and if there is not progress made within a period an explanation of why no progress was made. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, uh, I go ahead and, as we said before, I think we need to keep track of all financials involved in this. Mm -hmm. Any employee, any engineer, any advertising, printing a piece of paper because it's affected our residents. It, it's, it does, it, it's gone away from personal property rights to actually putting safety and money into other residents an issue. You know, everyone knows I'm all about personal property rights, but now they're affecting other people around them and putting their safety at an issue mm -hmm. and their finances at an issue. So I think that, I, you know, kind of as a direction for the town manager is that, I mean, this thing gets analyzed, gets written down every minute, every five cent piece of paper, every ink pen is figured out. So this way we can tell our residents, this is what our, it cost us. 
So mm -hmm. full list of permits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any other comments, questions, discussion? No. Nope. I'll kick a motion. The Board of Trustees, after reviewing testimony at a public hearing, find the owner in violation of Article 8 of the Millican Municipal Code and pursuant to Section 16-6-50, subsection 3, revoke the Plud Plain Development Permit, FHDP009. Second. Second. I'd like to amend the motion that an accounting is provided to the board of the um, costs involved in managing this project costs to the town and um, that reports be given at every meeting of the progress made. Do we have to vote on that first one? We have to have a yeah. second. Mm -hmm. uh, can we, can, yes. we, can we amend the second? So, <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Just to make so, sure. <laughs> yes. So uh, you will need to, I would do this in two separate motions, yes. actually. So um, I would move to vote on the first motion unamended. And then, uh, Peggy, I would do a second motion um, to direct um, what you're asking for. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense, Peg? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's vote on the first motion. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Burak? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Mayor Potem Austin? Yes. Mayor Woodcock? Yes. Motion passed. Nobody's here. Nobody's <laughs> 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 Um, I'm, I move that um, we direct staff to um, uh, have, a full accounting. have a full accounting of all of the expenses involved in um, this process and um, that we have, have uh, reports at every meeting until this project is completed of the status of the, uh, of the project. Second. Call for vote, please. Yes, sir. Trustee Smith. Yes. Trustee Ehrlich. Yes. Trustee Trailer. Yes. Trustee Burak. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Austin. Yes. Mayor Woodcock. Yes. Motion passed. And before going on to the next one, I've had a question and I'm going to ask it in the middle of the, right now. Everyone in, that's in the floodplain, they've been notified of this, the the insurance in that issues, right? No. no. Why not? Because it's a potential, it hasn't. It's been not acted on anything. Yeah. But they sh should still be notified that it's a possibility. We haven't had the studies done to verify that it will yet. trustees. Um, FEMA has not taken any action against the town other than to ask us to provide a plan for compliance. And as the town administrator pointed out, we don't have any engineering studies that quantify or specify danger, if any, to adjacent property. I would that would raise the question. I, I don't know that so much the mayor is concerned as the danger of the residents who might be affected by the revocation of the national flood insurance policies be notified and aren't they do that notification so that they can try to mitigate any potential loss that they may suffer should a flood come or should this project go sideways and they they lose that insurance. If I could address that, our understanding of the meeting at FEMA was that this was one of the things that they could do to inspire the town to take appropriate actions. At this point in time, they feel that we are taking the appropriate actions 
and uh, we're monitoring the results with the hopes that we don't get to that point. It isn't imminent at this point. It depends upon how the town responds to support uh, their efforts and our efforts to get this thing handled quickly and efficiently and um, try and get it done before the flood seasons come. All right, well, thank you. We'll go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. All right. Action agenda B, intergovernmental agreement between the town of Milliken and Colorado Department of Transportation. This item is, uh, we received an IGA from CDOT for the placement of a signal light at uh, State Highway 60 in Alice. Um, CDOT will be uh, coming in with $250,000 towards the project. We have budgeted 275. Hopefully we're at the $525,000 cost on this. If um, the board approves um, the IGA agreement with CDOT, next thing we'll do is go out and find a, uh, a contractor to handle this project for us through an RFP. CDOT's overseeing it, right? What's that? CDOT's the GC, they're overseeing it, the project? Um, that's kind of up in the air. They said that they want us to be the lead on the project now, and um, we've got some uh, folks in mind to make sure that they get an RFP if we do that. Yeah. Any questions? It's my understanding that um, the town has resources to pay for this through the actions of our citizens to uh, continue the tax that uh, paid for the streetlight at Highway 257 and Highway 60. I would just like to thank the citizens for approving that so that we can move forward with another stoplight. I agree. Thank you for pointing that out. Any questions down here? Motion. Uh, I move to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the town of Millican and the Colorado uh, Department of Transportation for the stoplight at Alice and Highway 60 uh, with the funds in the projected budget of 275000 Second. Tom Clerk, call for a vote, please. Yes, Trustee Bira? Yes. Trustee Trailer? Yes. Trustee Ehrlich? Yes. Trustee Wakeman? Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Austin? Yes. Mayor Woodcock? Yes. Motion passed. I thought, we, I thought we were tabling that until we had an actual lease. No, so we could approve it. With the on the lease, plan. Mr. Mayor, at uh, we did discuss the lease in the work session. Uh, we're not looking at approving the lease, just a this consensus is a considered of the board. Approval lease agreement with the Milligan Events Committee. That's what I'm saying. That's approving the lease with them. Well, we were looking at pulling that from the agenda. However, what uh, we'd like to do is just the form of the lease, just get a consensus of the board that that's fine. Since we discussed it and we went over things, uh, we don't need to have it on the agenda. Just whether or not you, as a consensus, approve the forward format. Or move forward. That's the question. I would table this until we have the full lease, but yes, I would move forward with getting the lease filled out. Good enough. Does that make sense? Yes. So. Anyways, action item C, consideration approval of lease agreement with the Milliken Events Committee. Elizabeth Austin is recusing herself. We're not voting on anything. No, we have to still do a, a motion to table it until the lease is wrote, but say yes. But you can't just table something without a motion, right? Am, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Sorry, didn't know you were talking to me. <laughs> 
So should I. I move to approve a consideration of a lease agreement with the Millican Events Committee. No. 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 no? Move to table it? Yeah, move to yes. table it to the next meeting. Move to table the approval of a lease agreement with the Millican Events Committee. Second. Second. <laughs> to the next meeting. To the next meeting. Seconded. No. Holly did. Holly did. Sorry. <laughs> Call for okay. a vote. Uh, Trustee Smith. Yes. Trustee Burak. Yes. Trustee Wakeman. Yes. Trustee Trailer. Yes. Trustee Rowland. Yes. Mayor Woodcock. Yes. So the last yes. thing, because we have nothing in discussion, informational, the last thing is item 12 on the agenda, and that is the town administrator's report. All right. Um, and one of the things that uh, legal counsel and I have been talking about with respect to the leases, how to pull it from the agenda. Um, I'm, I'm going to come up with some suggestions for the next meeting on a topic on the agenda where you can add or delete items that uh, need to be on the agenda. Um, what's that? It's not on... Agenda approval is your title? Yeah. yeah. That's when you amend the agenda. Yeah. All right. Well, we missed that then. <laughs> All right. From the uh, town administrator's report, uh, I included a written document into the packet that covered a lot of the issues that we have uh, accomplished so far. I would like to add um, on the Josephine project where I put uh, the original contract amount. Uh, we have also spent to date on that that doesn't show up under DeFalco um, 350,000 roughly on the icon engineering for that that's already been spent to date. Um, there are a lot of concerns with the project due to kind of uh, engineering issues come up that uh, were not identified for this project which will be discussed with icon at a later date and see if we can get those included into the grant for that project um, the RO plant is coming along currently there's work off-site building the bioreactor and uh, Things look good there. Let's look at uh, the Beeline project has already started. As you guys are coming into town, you probably see the works crew over there working on that. Uh, we did go out to the landowner just west of there, Mr. Tom Binder, and uh, we were met with uh, very friendly uh, um, support to help us get the project completed. Uh, County Road 46 project, um, CVL engineers has been um, retained as the engineer for the project, and they're underway on that. We just signed the IGA. Uh, TDS, uh, we're waiting one last um, paragraph for the contract, and we'll have that approved and we should be able to get going on that to where we're online with their system in 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. We did receive the JT, uh, JT consulting um, report on the feasibility study for the Hillsboro. Leonard was going over that. We haven't uh, analyzed that all the way right now. Uh, there is the retention facility uh, that's available to Millican out on the uh, plat and a cost for maintaining water in Hillsborough versus over there and how we get the water to our location are going to be the concern as to whether or not that's feasible to spend that kind of money on the Hillsborough and I'll let Leonard address that as we get that a little more identified. 
Uh, Martin Mobile Home Park, the trailer was sold. It's moved off the property, and the rest of the demolition will be starting on that. Um, I did have an opportunity. Uh, someone did come to me with a request to see if we would entertain the possibility of putting a tower uh, to lease a spot on our um, parking lot for uh, large trucks, and I didn't know if that was something that the board would want to entertain. Uh, so I'd look to the board to see if you could give me some direction on uh, where we are currently leasing truck parking spaces, would you want to entertain the possibility of leasing that property to a tower type installation? No. no. Personally, I wouldn't. It's too valuable to the citizens to park trucks there at this point. All right. I had a query on that, and I'll just say that that's probably not a possibility. Thank All right. Um, other than that, um, that's everything I've got. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to do a motion. Move to approve. Move to adjourn. Adjourn. <laughs> adjourn. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. 727 needs adjourned.